Subhuti was one of the chief disciples of Buddha, and he had been long wanting to propagate the teachings of his master. One morning during Buddha's sojourn in Jetavana, just outside his abode Gandakutir, he prostrated before Buddha and sought his permission to spread his message far and wide. Get up, Subhuti, Buddha said. It's not easy being a teacher. Even if you are speaking beautiful words, there will be plenty who will criticize and condemn you. With your blessings and grace, O Shasta, I'm sure it won't affect me. Do I have Tathagat's permission? Buddha remained silent for a few minutes and made no further remarks. Subhuti sat there with his head bowed. Meanwhile, other monks approached Buddha with urgent tasks relating to Jetavana and other viharas, retreat centers, and monasteries that were mushrooming in all parts of India. Three hours later, Buddha had his meal and went inside his cottage for his daily rest. A few more hours passed, and when Buddha emerged again for the evening discourse, Subhuti was still outside with his head bowed. Subhuti, Buddha said, you are still here. I thought you got your answer from my silence. I'm not wise enough to know the meaning of Tathagat's silence, Lord. No one is. Buddha smiled and assumed his lotus posture. What if you go to a village to teach Subhuti and people choose not to listen to you? What will you do? I'll not mind, Lord, for I'll remind myself that at least they are not calling me names or accusing me. What if they do that? I'll still smile, O Tathagat, for I'll remind myself that this is a small price to pay for spreading your message. That they may be doing much worse by abusing me physically. And what if they do that and hurl stones at you? I'll still be okay with Tathagat's grace. I'll remind myself that at least they have not pinned me down and stabbed me. What if they do that? I'll take heart thinking that they have not killed me. And what if Subhuti, Buddha asked in his usual detachment, they do kill you? I'll be most happy, Tathagat, Subhuti replied, raising his head for the first time. Beholding the beautiful form of Buddha with tearful eyes, he continued, Other than dying by Tathagat's feet, I cannot think of a better nirvana than dying spreading Tathagat's message. Subhuti, Buddha said, rising from his seat and embracing him. You are fit to be a teacher. Mourning was merely your test of patience. You have the spiritual attitude required to take on a great cause. In this wisdom of a lifetime, nothing else perhaps could spell any clearer the three core virtues that define a person's spiritual attitude. Patience, selflessness, and determination. In Subhuti's character, I also see a sense of gratitude and surrender. We can't develop an unconditional spiritual attitude without cultivating patience and selflessness. Non-fulfillment of desires and expectations is often at the root of human suffering. Why don't people value me? Why doesn't my partner love me? Why isn't the world waiting for me? Why isn't my work appreciated? And so on. If I start giving a sermon on how expectations are bad, that won't work because you already know all that. We are so compelled and controlled by our emotions and desires that when in the throes of them, our viewpoint seems so right and legit, no logic works at that time. That, however, can't be the excuse for not evolving spiritually. And that leads me to the crux of the matter today. A spiritual attitude. Unless we foster a spiritual outlook towards our own life and others, we can't really hope to rise above our petty thoughts and emotions. We place too much emphasis on self-comfort, on why I'm being treated or not treated a certain way. How about why shouldn't I be more selfless? Why shouldn't I be more giving? Rather than being in the crowd opposing Subhuti, why couldn't I be Subhuti instead? A spiritual attitude basically means that we don't always put ourselves at the center of our decisions and actions. Maybe we don't always have to look for what's in it for me. Why must every generous action of ours be reciprocated? After all, if it's truly selfless, then let it be just that. Selfless.